protected here. Um, our Father in the Lord is the regional overseer of Kifal White Bible Church Central Region, in, in which includes states of Minnesota, Ohio, Wisconsin, and Michigan. He is um, he is responsible as a senior analyst at U.S. Bank. In the early years of his prof professional career, he worked in many Nigerian news organizations. Um, he has been in different leadership positions. He is also a trained software quality assurance specialist and an international leader with international leadership, educational and leader educational leadership and leadership development scholar. Um, our minister today, he studied software engineering and also holds a doctoral degree focused in international leadership from University of St. Thomas. Um, he's, like I said, he's our um, regional overseer in the central region too and with years of experience and a lot of anointing, he's going to minister to us today and it is with so much and such special excitement that I'm pleased to welcome our Father and the Lord, Pastor Dr. Pastor Dr. Aki Adeni. Please let's give a warm welcome to him. Is that how you clap for Jesus? Please let's clap. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brethren. Amen. Amen. You know, I maybe I should start with an apology because actually I know you are probably expecting me to come in to, tomorrow. Uh, however, somewhere along the way, uh, you know, when my twin brother speaks, sometimes I have to follow him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, you know, in an attempt to just solidify what uh, Pastor Ike Okafo did in the morning and Pastor Lakujo, you know, kind of, uh, you know, hitting the hammer on the head of the knee. And I said, well, maybe this would be a good time to uh, kind of fit in and do a little bit of work together so that we can all strengthen our faith together in Jesus' name. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be able to minister uh, this year's conference. Uh, I consider it a great privilege, uh, more so the opportunity to actually do it today because of so many other uh, engagements all over the place that by the grace of God uh, uh, we'll be able to honor as a result of your flexibility. I pray that God Almighty will specially and doubly bless you as a result of that in Jesus' name. I, I, I love your rendition of victory in Jesus, how you were able to sneak in, and I think that's your desire, and that desire will be granted in Jesus' name. Restoration in Jesus, and I think that's wonderful. I'm believing and trusting God that the Lord will grant all of us uh, restoration in every area that we are expecting it in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. I'm hoping that you can keep awake. Uh, it's been a heavy duty day, but the Lord will give you uh, the weight of glory to receive what he has for you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have. I'm especially grateful uh, to our brethren in New, uh, New England area for the opportunity to minister to them at the Young Adult Conference. We are grateful for what you have been doing and what you will do now. Father, we pray that you take this tongue of clay and minister to your people so that the blessing that is earmarked for this moment, no one will be missing in Jesus' name. I pray you give them attentive uh, ears and retentive memory and a soaking heart to get the best from this time in Jesus' name. Father, give us utterance and let there be clear pathway, both in the spirit and in the physical, for your people to receive the best of what you have right now. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the topic we are, that is before us has been beaten and overbeaten so much 
that we really need the Holy Spirit to help us so that we can get something new, uh, something refreshing. Because when you talk about the subject of restoration, that's basically the business of God. That's the business God is in. All the way from the beginning till now, God has been in the business of restoration. Restoring that which, has, which was falling, restoring men that are falling, restoring situations, restoring lives, restoring circumstances. That's basically what God does all the way from the beginning. And when you think about Jesus Christ, what did he come to do? He came to restore, to renew, and to bring us back to where God wants us to be. We are going to read a couple of passages. Uh, I try not to give too, too much because, uh, number one, uh, one of those things I'm concerned about is you'll be so glued uh, to the screen in an attempt to get everything that is uh, projected to you that you will not be able to pay attention. I want you to really pay attention. I want you to be attentive. I want you to put your mind in what we are saying. Not just about writing it down. You can actually do the writing later. I want you to really concentrate because it's been, it's been a long day. And so as the last message, sometimes uh, it may bring a little challenge. But I'm believing God that you will not be challenged, but you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Let's read a couple of passages. And Luke 15 is one of those passages that I think uh, explains to us, even by the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, what restoration is about. Restoration is the work of mercy, is the work of grace that God does in the life of willing people, individuals who are willing. Our title, our message today is the what and the worth of restoration. That is basically giving us two aspects of the message. What is restoration? And then what is restoration worth? What is the profit of restoration? What do you get from restoration? And then between those two uh, points, I'm going to bring a why, uh, which will tie the what and the worth together, a why. You know, in communication studies, uh, they always tell, tell us uh, about the five W and the one H. Uh, five W, who, what, when, where, why, and how. So I'm trying to use that model in a way, in a very simplistic way, that you will understand what we are talking about. And then it will bring great blessing to you. Let's read from Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. It's a long passage and I will endeavor to read it uh, because I may not be opportune to come back uh, to read it again. So Luke 15, I'm reading from the 10th verse. Verse 10 all the way to 24. Luke 15. Luke chapter 15. Uh, the whole of Luke chapter 15 is about the parable of the lost. And I have to say from the beginning that nothing can be restored if it is not lost. You know, and if there's restoration, it's talking about something you lost. It's something you had before. And now you are trying to get it back. And so, as we come to Luke 15, Jesus was talking about the parable. It was all about parable. The lost sheep. It talks about the lost coin. But now in verse 10, which is where we are going to be reading, um, at the end of verse 10, he says, Likewise, I say unto, unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. There is joy. Restoration brings great joy, both to man and to God. So when we talk about restoration, we are talking about something that is central to God, that is at the heart of godliness. Restoration, restoring us. Bringing us back to the position where God wants us to be. Now look at verse 11 now. Let's read from verse 11. We're going to read uh, the whole verses all the way from verse 11 to 24. Please follow me. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many day, days after, the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance, his, his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose 
a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. Verse 17, and when he came to himself. This is the point where rest restoration is very interesting. First of all, we had a status. You know, concerning, he was, he was a son. He was a son. A son that became a prodigal. A son that became too, too quick. Uh, who was too speedy uh, for the father. He, he, wasn't, uh, he wasn't very solemn enough. Uh, he was in a hurry. And so he asked the father, give what belongs to me. And so the father said, okay, if that's what you want, I give you the free will. Go ahead. But then Abel received all that the father gave. He went out and then he wasted everything. So that tells you restoration is as a result of, you know, a life of waste, a life of loss, a life of someone losing something very important, something very serious. And now they are crying like Cain. You know, they are now looking for a way to get it. They are crying like Esau. You know, they are looking for a way to get it back. So we are told he came to himself. This is the interesting point. This is the junction where the mercy of God meets the prayer of man. The mercy of God meets the prayer of man because man becomes despondent. Man recognizes his lost state. Man recognizes that he cannot move forward without God. And so here you see the story of this father and the son. Of course, as you look at this story, the father represents God. The son represents all of us. You know, all souls on earth. All souls who have been created by the merciful God. And so we see here, he came to himself and he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to, to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise. That's a very wonderful state to be. I will arise and go to my father. I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy higher servants. Humility. Humility has come in. Ego is gone. You know, that initial, initial pride of, I belong to the Father. I can get anything. And I'm okay. I can take care of myself. I don't need the Father. When I get my whatever he gives to me, I can go and spend it anyhow. That initial ego, you know, self-confidence has given way now to humility. Has given way to self-depreciation. Has given way to a realization. That the only way forward is coming to the Father. And so we can see here, he came back to the Father. He says, I will come to the Father. And so in verse 20, and he arose and he came to his Father. But when he was yet a great way off, his Father saw him. Glory to God. His Father saw him. Which tells you that for every lost soul, God is always willing to restore them. God is waiting patiently for the lost one to return. You can see here, for as long as the son was willing to come back, the father was willing to receive him. No wonder the Bible says, if ye be willing and obedient. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 if, and verse 19. He said, come now, let us reason together. You know, you see that if you reason with God and you are able to come to him, he says, if ye be willing. And obedient until we are ready to reason with God. Restoration cannot occur. Renewal cannot come in. And possession of those things that we have lost will not come to pass. And so we praise God tonight that God has brought you and I to a season of restoration. I thank God because I believe I'm talking to believers. Because you may think it's only sinners who can lose what has been given to them. No. Believers do lose the things that are given to them because when we become careless, uh, when we begin to not be watchful, when we become prayerless, 
when we become too overconfident and we are no longer as watchful and uh, desirous of the things of God as we ought to, and the world beclouds us, and the things of, of the world become so uh, elevated in our eyes that the things of God, we may lose the things of God, and the things of the world we be holding as if they are precious, but suddenly we realize running away from God, we realize rejecting God, we realize not being in line with God is not the best. And that the best for us is for you and I, by the grace of God, to value that which God has given and to hold it and treasure it. And so I'm praying tonight, whatever you have lost, it will be restored to you in Jesus' name. Maybe you have lost your first love, the love you have for God. Maybe you have lost your, for, your first commitment, your first conviction, your first consecration, service unto God, your fervency in the Lord your spirituality, and you are just so kind and now and secular. You know, I'm believing that tonight, as a result of this our fellowship together, the Lord will restore you to favor. The Lord will, will restore you to his blessing. The Lord will restore you to your possession. He will restore you to your status, your status with him, where you are standing with him in high places, where you are in a special place with him, that you can hear him. He can speak to you. Maybe you used to hear him before. You used to talk to him very clearly before. But now, he's so far away, you will be restored to that status in Jesus' name. And so we see here, you know, coming with the humility. He says, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But look at the Father here, the Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father. He said, to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. You can see the restoration there. The best robe, bring it and put it on him. You know, whatever garments that you and I are wearing out there that is making the enemy to sneer at us, to look down on us. You know, because when the enemy sees us, it will not be like, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? No, when he sees you, he will know you. He will know your name. He will know that you are with God. You will be like those believers in, in, in uh, the book of Acts 17, where they were, you know, they were, they were they, they, in Antioch, they said, we know that these people have been with the Lord. And so they are recognized. Heaven will recognize you. People on now will recognize you, that you are a child of destiny, that the hand of the Lord is upon you. And the grace of God that has been bestowed upon you, that that grace is still there, and the light of his glory is shining upon you. All of those will be restored tonight in Jesus' name. And where you, are, you still have them, the Lord will increase them more and more. The Lord will anoint you more and more. The Lord will empower you more and more. You know, he says in his word, I will give you a, a mouth and a wisdom that no one can gainsay. That is the joy that we have in the Lord. When we are in the right position, he gives us a mouth, we speak, and it comes to pass. And he gives us a wisdom, we speak, and people are alarmed. People are, you know, they are just, you know, they are perplexed. They don't know where the answer is coming from. It's by the wisdom of God, because that word, that wisdom, God gives at the right time. And that same wisdom, we go to the exam hall and you discover the answers are coming. And you're asking yourself, I don't even know where this answer is coming. When you are restored to favor, when mercy is restored, you discover that the grace of God comes in, everything becomes easy. So shall it be for you and I, in Jesus' name. So he returned to the father and the father put on the best robe. He put the ring in his hand. That's a mark of authority. And the shoes on his feet. And he, bring, and he says, bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. Hallelujah. When restoration comes, there's merriment, there's joy, there's gladness. Even heavens will rejoice. The Bible says, the whole heaven will rejoice. I read it to you before in verse 10 of, the, of this same book of uh, Luke 15. In verse 10, if you back up again, it says, there is joy in the presence of God or in the presence of the angels of God, over one sinner that repented. When restoration occurs, you are going to discover, by the grace of God, there's not just joy here in your heart, there's not just joy here in the fellowship, in your family, in the family of God, but heaven itself is rejoicing. 
the whole heaven, the host of heaven, the angels, all the, the, the glorious personalities of heaven, they are rejoicing as a result of restoration. Tonight, restoration in your life. Tonight, restoration in your family. Tonight, restoration in our midst, in our church, in Jesus' name. And so we see clearly from here that restoration is something that is very, very important. That's why when David lost it, when he lost his status, when he lost his position in the book of Psalm, he cried. He cried. He cried unto God. Like that young man who, you know, by riotous living, lost his status with the father. You can see here, David cried unto God. Psalm 51, look at it with me. Let's read Psalm 51. Psalm 51. We are reading from verse 12. David cried. In fact, look at verse 11. It says, cast me not away from thy presence. You know, restoration is necessary because it's, it's something that has to happen after something, someone has been cast away, rejected, thrown out of favor, of possession. He says, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restoration is needed so that the Spirit of God can be restored. So that we can have the, the, the image, the personality, the power that God has assigned to us even from the beginning. And so he says, cast me not away. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And then in verse 12 he says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. If you are a child of God and you are no longer joyful, something needs to be restored. There's something lacking. There's something missing. If you say you are born again, you are a child of God, you are a Christian, but there's no joy. You are not happy. Because our joy is not based on the physical, on the secular. Our joy is spiritual. That's, that's why it's not just about gladness. Joy is an internal thing. Joy. Being happy. Anybody can be happy. If you have money, you can be happy. If you have wealth, you can be happy. Physical wealth. But when you are joyful, it's an internal state. It's a state of mind. You know, that has heavenly consequence. So, David said here, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. I know I was saved, but I lost it now. I need it restored. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. We cannot be upheld. By the Spirit of God, the free Spirit that God gives, until we are restored to our status as sons of God, just like the prodigal son that we just read in Luke 15. I pray tonight, as many as are prodigal in their, in their way of life, in their relationship with God, I pray tonight the Lord will restore us in Jesus' name. Because it is the promise of God. You know, even God himself said it in the book of Joel, which is one of the passages I believe you may have heard over and over and over throughout this conference, Joel, Joel chapter, we're going to read from chapter 2, Joel chapter 2, we are reading from verse 25, Joel chapter 2 in verse 25, it says, and I will restore, so that tells you, I will restore. It's the will of God. I will restore to you. To you. I said to you, my brother. I said to you, my sisters. Tonight, my prayer is that the Lord will restore unto you everything that you have lost. I pray God will restore you unto you spirituality. I pray God will restore unto you strength. I pray God will restore unto you stability. I pray God will restore unto you sustenance, surplus of his spirit, of his substance. God will restore unto you in Jesus' name. He says, I will restore unto you the years that, that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Look at it. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. I pray God will restore satisfaction unto you. 
satisfaction in your career, satisfaction in your personal life, satisfaction in your spiritual endeavor, God will grant unto you in Jesus' name. And so we see very clearly here that r restoration is the will of God, is what God wants for you and I. And I pray tonight by the grace of God, you will be restored, I will be restored, we will all be restored in Jesus' name. Actually, restoration also affects and applies even to a situation where you want to get to what the plan of God is, even though you are not gone, but you are not there. So it's like a man is between, you know, between the plan of God, meaning you are not there yet, but you are on the way to it. And God says, I will get you there tonight, wherever you need to be, wherever we need to be, God will get us there in Jesus' name. I said, God, we get us there in Jesus' name. Three simple things I'm just going to talk to, uh, to you about before we pray. And I title them in a very simplistic way. Remember, I was talking about the five W and the one H. The who, the what, the when, the where, the why, and how. You know, in communication theory. Well, let's come to that now. Three things. Number one, what is restoration? I know that's simple enough. But that's what I want to talk about, restoration. And I'm hoping that the Lord will help us to look at it in a very simplistic way, in a way that you and I can understand. What is restoration? We have to ask that question. And then secondly, we are going to look at the other aspect uh, of why restoration? Why do we need restoration? What is restoration? Why do we need restoration? And number three, what is the worth? The worth of restoration. What is the worth of restoration? What is it worth? What is it worth? What is the worth of that restoration to you and to me? And the essence of the reason why we must be restored. You know, let me start with a story. What is restoration? I think this story will help you. An angry man. That is point one now. An angry man. One angry guy. He got so angry, he entered into the basilica in Rome, with a sledgehammer. And the most beautiful architectural piece is there. He took a hammer and he began to hit them. And he began to, he began to break them down and destroy them. And he succeeded in destroying two very important pieces before he was finally arrested. Praise the Lord. But if you are thinking of that, the question is, do you think that the owners of those architecture, they are just going to leave it like that? After it is destroyed, they just leave it like that? Of course, no. Actually, we are told that after this rampaging, the authorities of the Basilica, St. Peter's Cathedral, actually that's the name of the place, it's a basilica in Rome, they look for the best expert that they could get in architecture, and they employ them to attend to these two important architecture that have been destroyed by this rampaging guy. And at the end of the day, the end, the result of those two architectural pieces ended up being better than even the beginning. Let me give you an, uh, an application of that. The Lord put two individuals in a garden at the beginning, you know their name, Genesis. As you know, Genesis chapter 2, you know them. Genesis chapter 1, you know them. And then in Genesis chapter 3, Satan came to them. That's Satan representing the rampaging guy. And then the two architectural pieces representing Adam and Eve. And Satan did a number on Eve that also affected Adam. And as a result of that, a curse was brought upon the two of them. But here is what you realize in application was that even though that mistake was made, that evil thing happened, just like the owner of those architectural pieces didn't give up, God has not given up on the human beings that he created. We are created in the image of God. And so just as the authorities of the basilica found the experts, to come and repair these broken pieces of architecture, God himself, by his Holy Spirit, 
through his son, Jesus Christ, the best physician that you can ever get, he sent him here to go and restore that which the devil has destroyed of mankind. That's why today you and I, we can have the hope of restoration. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. And by the grace of God today, we can be talking about restoration because you can see that God himself is interested in it. So as we think about restoration, restoration are on the man's part. It's repentance. That's the only way it can happen. Restoration cannot happen until there is repentance. And uh, when we come about man and God, repentance. But you know what? Repentance, we thank God that he's, he doesn't leave us alone with the earth. He also reached out to us. He will reach out to man. He says, I'm standing at the door. And I'm knocking. If any man will open a backslider, if any man will open a sinner, if any man will open one that is totally devoid of the spirit of God, if any man will open an atheist, if any man will open one who is against God, if any man will open a wicked soul, if any man will open, I will come in. And God is always willing because he's in the business of restoration. Is in the business of taking destroyed and, and useless instrument and implement and bringing them back. I bring you to Acts chapter 9. That was the case of a man there that you and I know. Acts chapter 9 is the case of Saul of Tarsus. Who was going about destroying, just like those two rampage, uh, like that individual rampaging individual, who was in the basilica at Rome and he was destroying things. Saul of Tarsus was like that. He was going about destroying things. And then the Lord said, I'm going to reach out to him. And the Lord reached out unto him. Saul, Saul, why art thou persecuted me, uh, persecuting me? It is a hard thing for you to kick against the priest. And as a result of God reaching out, there was repentance on the part of Saul of Tarsus. Number two, as we repent, we engage God. Repentance e engagement. We engage God, but God doesn't leave us alone. Because you can see Saul of Tarsus engaging God for three days, praying, agonizing. He engaged God in prayer. But in that engagement, I, pra I praise God because he is the author of restoration. He encourages us. So, on man's side, we have repentance. On God's side, we, we see a reach out. On man's side, we see engagement. On God's side, we see encouragement. There is encouragement from heaven. Encouragement to prayer. Encouragement to seek God. Seek me why I may be found. Call upon me while I'm still near. There is encouragement. The Spirit is bearing witness with you. He's encouraging you. So our repentance, that's how restoration, that's how restoration can happen. That's what restoration is about. Repentance, engagement with an encouragement from God. There is S, sincerity. Sincerity of purpose. You are sincere. And in that sincerity, you get heaven's support. There is support from heaven. Heaven supports you. Heaven encourages you. you. You look at the prodigal. He came back home. The father didn't say, go back. I don't want you anymore. He supported him. He encouraged him. That's what restoration. That's the process of restoration. T, there is truthfulness. You are truthful to yourself. You are very sincere to yourself. You are not just looking at, uh, you know, somebody to do it for you, but you are sincere. You can see in the prodigal, he said, I have sinned against God. I am not worthy to be called your son anymore. I have sinned. Saul of Tarsus had the same mindset. That's what brings restoration. There's repentance. As a result of God's reach out, there's engagement. Through his encouragement, there's sincerity by his support. There's truthfulness. As we tarry, as he helps us to tarry, we tarry before him. He tarries with us. He stays with us. He doesn't leave us alone. And then that opens our eyes. There is openness. Our eyes are open. We are open to correction. Now we understand where we have gone lo got, got lost. And then we see God is, is in an orderly and orchestrated fashion. He is helping us to open up. 
is digging into our heart, is giving us the opportunity to understand. And then A, our resolution, we make a resolution. As we are open to correction, we make a resolution. We are rethinking our position. But you know how that is possible? The resources of heaven. God makes all those resources. Thinking right. Thinking straight. God makes those resources available to us. And then A, we accept our guilt. That's where resolution comes in. Restoration comes in. We accept our guilt. We abandon the past. We accept the present pardon. A present you know, situation that God has given unto us. And God helps us to accomplish it. He gives us accomplishment. Then T, we trust in God. That's the man's part. We trust in God. And God says, the time has come. God provides the right timing. Because there is time for everything. And God says, for the prodigal, there was time. In the beginning, the time was not right for him. He couldn't turn himself back. But God says, the time is right. Now it is time for you to trust God. Because God is for you and you are waiting for him. And you want to obey him. Next now is the involvement. You get involved. Involvement. You are intentional. You are willing to do as the, give, as the cancer that God is giving. You are willing. That's what restoration is about. There is involvement. There is intentional. Intentionality. You are intentional about it. You say, I'm going to do it. I will go unto my father. I will turn back. This is what makes restoration possible. You are intentional. And then the spirit of God inspires you. That's the God part. He inspires you. Then there is obedience. You obey it. That gentle spirit whispering to you, you obey that spirit. <laughs> and God opens the door of opportunity. God opens the door. You've opened the door for God. Now God opens the door again. He opens the door for you. As you are obedient, he opens the door now unto you. And then your spirit is renewed. A new spirit is given. That's the conclusion of the restoration. And God begins to nurture you. And the nature of God is granted unto you. Praise the Lord. And so we see very clearly what is restoration. It is repentance. Repent ye therefore. I will go to my father. What is restoration? E, engagement. Father, I am not worthy to be called your son. Forgive me. Forgive me. And then the Father is able to forgive. There is sincerity of purpose. I have sinned against God. You knew that what you did was wrong. And so you are willing to turn back to God. That is what restoration is about. You are willing to be restored. You repent. You engage God. You talk to God with sincerity of purpose. You are truthful in your assessment of the situation. You are not blaming anyone. You are not saying, God, why don't you stop me? Why don't you, you know, just like that passage of scripture, say, God, why did you deceive me? You know, you deceived yourself because God didn't deceive you. Your heart deceived you. A man gets lost as a result of the loss of the heart. The pride of life that he has. And so, when he's truthful to himself, he will not cover up. He will not pamper himself unto ignorance. And then he's open to the correction of the word of God. And that correction, through that correction, you are pleading for mercy. And then you resolve, you rethink in your heart, your position, and you submit to the mercy and the grace of God. You accept your guilt, you abandon the past, you accept the present, you trust in God, not in self, or any great man, or stuff, or your status, or your substance. You trust only in God. And as you trust in God, God says, the time has come. Until you are able to trust in him, the time has not come. Praise the Lord. And as you and I trust in the Lord, then we get involved. We are intentional. We surrender. We yield. Hallelujah. We do. You know, we are willing to do as counseled by God and by his, by his spirit. And then you are obedient in righteousness. And then the new spirit comes in by the inspiration of God, by the nurture of the spirit of God. And my prayer is that God will make it happen in you. God will make it happen in us. By the grace of God, there will be restoration in our lives in Jesus' name. Restoration. You know, the Bible tells us very clearly that it is God's will to restore us, to bring us to himself, to help us to be who 
He wants us to be. And in as much as we are willing, we are willing, God also is willing. And God, by his grace, will continue to make us willing in Jesus' name. So as many as are looking unto God for restoration tonight, make sure that there be repentance. Engage God. Be sincere. Be truthful. Be open. Resolve to follow God. Don't do it halfway. Accept that you are guilty and accept his pardon too. Trust in the Lord. Get intentional and get involved in this spiritual process. And that process may include that some things you have to give them up as the Lord will be speaking to your heart. And by the grace of God, all of those things will be done through your obedience and a new spirit and nurture that comes <clears throat> from the throne of God. And the Lord of glory will make it happen in you and in me, in Jesus' name. I've used a story to illustrate to you what restoration is about. But let me show unto you the case of John Mark in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Restoration. Because while you may be unprofitable to God at one time, for as long as you repent and you engage God and you are willing to be sincere, you will see that you'll be acceptable unto God again. Uh, let's read actually Acts 15 to give us context. In Acts chapter 15, you know this story very well, but let's read it. Acts chapter 15 in verse 37. Acts chapter 15. Let's read in verse 37. Acts 15 verse 37. And Barnabas determined to take with them Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia. Because restoration to favor, to status, is only given to those who have departed, those who have gone away. In fact, the meaning of restoration you know, is that you are able to turn somebody back from the wrong path and you bring them to the right path. That's what it means to restore. You restore them to the right way, to right thinking, to right position, right status, right standing with God. Restoration. Which was what David was crying about in uh, Psalm 51 verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of salvation. I had it before. But I've lost it. But look at it here. This man is going to lose something here. Very serious. It says, Paul thought good not to take John Mark with them because he departed from them from Pamphylia. He didn't go through. He went not with them to the war. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus and Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren to the grace of God. But look at the restoration now. The restoration in 2 Timothy. You can see now, after there was repentance, there was an engagement, sincerity, truthfulness, openness, resolution, acceptance, a trust, you know, that is renewed, obedience and a new spirit. 2 Timothy, look at it with me. You can see that he was brought back. And I am praying for everyone that whatever has been taken from you, you will receive them back in Jesus' name. Everything that you have lost by the grace of God, you will restore them back. He will give them back to you. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Now look at the word of Paul. Paul who doesn't want to see John Mark, who said, I will have nothing to do with him. I'd rather go with somebody else. But look at it now. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. This is the joy of restoration. This is the end of restoration. When you are restored, when we are restored, look at it. 2 Timothy chapter 4, look at what happened here. It says in verse 11, Only Luke is with me. Take Mark, that's John Mark now, and bring him with thee. Why? For he is profitable to me for the ministry. 
when God restores us to favor, to status, we become profitable. Ministry becomes profitable in our hand. Our lives before becomes profitable to God. When we are restored to the purpose and the plan of God, profitability comes in. Blessing comes in. Goodness of God comes in. And my prayer tonight is, you will become profitable. Your life will be profitable to heaven. Your life will be profitable to the church of God. You will become a profitable sons and daughters unto the almighty God in Jesus' name. In any area, whatever name you are given, he is not profitable. Now the Lord is changing that name this weekend. And he's turning you to a profitable son, a profitable daughter. Whatever description has been used of you, uh, about you in a negative way, God is turning it around for positive uh, purposes in Jesus' name. So we see very clearly now that when a man is restored, when rest restoration is done, it brings profitability. Now the second thing is, why do we need restoration? Why? That takes us to the second point. Why restoration? Why is restoration necessary? Well, look at, look at the book of Psalm that we read before. We're going to go back there now. The book of Psalm. Why is it necessary? Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Why do we need restoration? Why is it so important? Both to us and to God. Why? It's restoration. Psalm 51. Let's look at it. Psalm 51. In verse 12 that we read before, it says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Why is restoration important? Restoration is important, as you see here, because all that we lost is given back to us. That's why it's important. That's why it's very good. It is important for me to state three things very quickly. Number one, it is important because it is the plan of God. It is God's plan. Restoration is important, number two, because... It is our gracious plea. You can see in that passage again. Number three, it is important because it, it brings good pleasure. It gives you good pleasure. It gives me good pleasure. So there is God's plan. There is the gracious plea. There is the good pleasure. God's plan. I will restore unto you. It is the plan of God to restore unto you. And unto me, that which we have lost, I will restore unto you. That's what God said. In fact, look at the book of, uh, the book of, let's, let's look at the book of Hosea, chapter 2. Hosea. The book of Hosea. If you are there, Hosea, chapter 2. Hosea chapter 2, in verse 23. Hosea chapter 2, verse 23. And I will sow her unto me in the heart, and I will have mercy upon her that has not obtained mercy. You see that? It is the plan of God to restore you and I to his mercy, to his favor. He says, I will do it. He has planned it. If you look at God's doing from beginning, in the book of Genesis, after the fall, immediately God had a plan. That even though there was a, a, a fall, a falling away, there will also be a restoration. If you go back to Genesis, you are going to discover that that's exactly what God did. You can see in the beginning that the enemy took away the covering, the favorable covering that God gave unto man. But immediately after that, God himself restored. He restored unto us the grace, the goodness, the power, the strength to be able to fight back what the enemy has taken. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 3. Let me read it to you. Unto the woman 
He said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. That's the consequence of the fall. And thy conception in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. But look at in verse In verse 18, in verse 18, pardon me, let, let, let's back up. Uh, before verse 18, let's read verse 15. Verse 15, look at verse 15 there. It says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. That's talking about the serpent now. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. You see here that God gave power. Even though there was a fall, we came to the level of the serpent. We were supposed to be above. But now God says, I will give you a shoe. I will give you the strength, the power to be able to overcome. As he is attacking you, you are going to be able to press him down and bruise his head and break his head. And by the grace of God, in every area that the enemy has been attacking you, you will break his head. By the power of the Lord given unto you, you will break his head in Jesus' name. That authority has been given to the believer that when we are restored to favor, we have the power to break his head. In fact, look at what the Bible says in the book of, in the book of Luke. Look at the book of Luke, what the Bible says. The book of Luke, the word of God says in Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, in Luke chapter 10, look at what the word of God says. In verse 18, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan. As lightning fall from heaven. Verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power. God has given you power. Say God has given me power. That's why restoration is very important. Restoration restores you and gives you the power. The power of God is given unto you back. So that where we are falling below the level of the serpent. Now we are, we are raised up to the level of a saint. To the position of a saint. And the Lord gives us the power. And that power, what do you use the power for? He said, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents. You see that? Because our enemy from the beginning was the serpent. But now God gives you through restoration. Why is it necessary to be restored? God gives you power. It's the plan of God. He gives you power. I said God gives you power. And the power will work for you, it will work in you, will work through you in Jesus' name. He has given you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. And he says, nothing shall by enemies hurt you. When you are restored to strength, to stability, to power, to fervency, nothing shall by enemies hurt you. I pray it shall be so for you tonight in Jesus' name. You, even they themselves have the testimony. Look at verse 17. He said, The 70 return again with joy. There's restoration of joy. They went out, they came back, they said, We have joy. You have joy. We have joy. Joy shall be our portion in Jesus' name. They return. Restoration returns us to joy, it returns us to our status. It returns us to strength. That's why it's very important. Because that's the plan of God. God is not interested in you being weak. Your weakness doesn't do anything for God. It is only in strength that we become useful for God. In spiritual strength, we are useful. We become battle acts for the Lord. That's why being weak is not the plan and purpose of God for you. He wants you to be in strength. He said, Behold, I give unto you power. So they testify that the restoration that they receive. Gave them joy. He said, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. When we are restored, just like the prodigal son, we can now use the name of our father 
our heavenly father. That's why when we now say in the name of Jesus, it works for you, it works for me. That name will continue to work for you. The Lord will restore you to the power of the name of Jesus. The Lord will restore you to the power in the blood of Jesus. The Lord will restore all of us to the strength with which Jesus was able to conquer Satan and the grave and death. And he was victorious. And he has given us the victory. And that victory will be ours in Jesus' name. That's why restoration is very, very important. It is God's plan to restore you to strength. He said, I will restore unto you. But number two, it is a gracious plea. It is something that we plead for. Gracious plea. That's our plea. That's the plea of the psalmist. He said, restore unto me. He was pleading with God. Restore unto me. That's why. That's why it's important. We are pleading with God. Because if God doesn't restore us, the enemy, the enemy is waiting. Is waiting. The Bible says, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he has not stopped. And he will not stop until God stops him. And in your life, God will put a stop to his activity. In our families, God will put a stop to his activity. He will progress no further. In Jesus' name. Amen. When we are restored, our strength is renewed. The power of God is given unto us. What we have lost is given unto us. And by the grace of God, we come to fullness of the power of God. We are restored to grace and mercy. So he says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me. There is no man who can uphold himself. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. It's of the Lord's mercy. So the mercy of God is, re is released, is renewed, is restored into our life. And we are able to accomplish the purpose and the plan of God for our life. So mercifully, the Lord comes into your life, into my life, and renews us and empowers us. That's why it's very important. Without restoration, the enemy will prevail. Without restoration, the enemy will defeat us. Without restoration, we will not be able to face, you know, the, the enemy, uh, the, the, the arch enemy that we have that wants to doom us. We will not be able to stand before him. But when we are restored, strength is restored. Power is restored. Grace is restored. Mercy is restored. The heavens come to our aid. That's why restoration is very important. You know, you have to realize that we are all lost souls. We, we, we lost the grace and the mercy of God because of the fall. Isaiah 53 verse 6 says, All we like sheep, we have gone astray. We have gone everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of us all. So restoration brings us, takes away the guilt and the condemnation of life. And then it brings unto us the favor and the mercy that comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. So number one, why is it very important? It is God's plan. Why is it very important? It's our gracious plea. Number three, why is restoration? Why is there restoration? Why is it very important? It is the good pleasure of both man and God. It brings pleasure. It brings pleasure. Hosea. Hosea chapter 1. In Hosea chapter 1, in verse 7. Hosea. Open your Bibles with me, please. Hosea chapter 1, verse 7. He says, But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. And I will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. God says, I won't do it by any of those things. I will do it myself. Then said God, for ye are my people. That's in verse 9 now. He says, ye are my, he said, call his name Loamai. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. But look at verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. And it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. It shall come to pass in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. You remember? It was in verse 9. He says, You are not my people. I have rejected you. But when there is restoration, the Bible says, Now you are my people. I am bringing you 
He said, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Hallelujah. Ye are the sons of the living God. That means as sons now, we have access to the resources of heaven. We have access to the possibilities of heaven. We have access to the goodness and the joy that heaven brings. We have access to all that God has to offer. Why devil looks and is planning and is looking to spoil? God loves to spare. Hallelujah. That's why restoration is very sweet, is very important, is wonderful, and is something that everyone must pursue. The devil is locking an hand to spoil, but God loves to spare us. He loves to speak to us. He loves to steady and establish us in faith. That's why restoration is very important. He said, if ye be willing, in as much as we are willing, and we are engaging God, again, remember, repentance, engagement, sincerity, truthfulness, openness, resolution, acceptance, trusting God, getting involved and intentional, being obedient, and then receiving that new spirit, cultivating that new spirit. Then the Lord will meet us at the point of our need for restoration. And so it shall be for you and for me in Jesus' name. So it shall be for you and for me in Jesus' name. Point number three before we pray. Point number three is the worth. What is it worth? Why all the trouble about the restoration? Well, maybe you will understand if you ask the owners of those very important, wonderful architectural pieces. They will tell you it was worth too, so much for them. That's why we had to look for the best expert who can help us to restore it. The worth of restoration, well, maybe you want to ask God. You know, it's because God considers you and I to be very important in his heavenly agenda. God believes that we are important to his agenda. That's why he says, I will restore. And by the grace of God, restoration will be yours. Restoration will be mine. And the blessings of restoration, the Lord will give unto us in Jesus' name. Let's go back to the book of Joel. Joel chapter 2, as we quickly round up. Joel chapter 2, he says, And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. The worth is that whatever is lost in the past, we are able to get it back. In fact, let me summarize very quickly before I go to the passages. If we don't have time to even read the passages, you can write them down. It's displayed unto you. Luke 15, verse 10 to 24. Psalm 51, verse 12, we have read them. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. We're going to read that even all the way to verse 32. You can write that down. Isaiah 57, verse 18, and verse 8. You can write all of those down. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17 and 19. All of those you can put as part of those passages for point number three. The worth. But let me summarize it in a way that will be very clear unto you. The worth of restoration. What is it worth? Number one is that the wrath of God is pacified. The wrath of God is pacified. That's more important. Hallelujah. The wrath of God. The Bible says God is angry every day with the wicked. And it says the wicked shall be cast into hell. And every nation that forget God. What is restoration? What is it worth? What is the profit of restoration? What does it bring? The wrath of God is pacified. His anger is taken away. You know, the Bible says our God is a consuming fire. That fire is quenched. That fire is tempered. That fire is removed. That fire is taken out of the way for everyone who is restored. Hellfire is no longer your destination. That's why it's so important. That's why restoration is very important. Number two, the way of godliness is brought back. The pathway of godliness is brought back. We have lost that way before because of sinfulness. Number one, God got angry because we became sinful. But now the way 
of godliness is open unto us because we repent. Remember, repentance, engagement, sincerity, truthfulness, openness, resolution, acceptance, trust in God, involvement, intentionality, obedience, and new spirit. As a result of that, we are restored to the way of godliness. We are brought back. That's number two. The Lord has such a joy in us that we have been in the wilderness for so long that now the joy is, is oozing out. We want to be in the right path. It is such a joy, brethren, as I said. If you have been in the wilderness, you have been walking in the wrong way. I always tell people, I said, it is never too late to come to the right way. However long you have gone in the wrong way, it's still the wrong way. It can never become the right way until you come to the right way. So we are brought back to godliness, the right path, the path that leads to heaven, the straight and narrow way. We are brought back to it when we are restored. Number three, the watchfulness of the godly is rekindled. The wrath of God pacified, the way of godliness brought back. Watchfulness of the godly rekindled. The watchfulness. Now we become watchful. Because we are in the right path. We are taken out of the way of perdition. And we are brought to the right path. Hallelujah. Wrath of God pacified. Anger of God taken away. Then the way of godliness is made, is made plain to us. We are able to walk into it. Righteousness and holiness. And then we become watchful. The, the, the watchfulness that we had from beginning. Now it's rekindled. We become very watchful. We are no longer, you know, the kind of people that we used to be. Number four, waywardness of the ungodly is diminished and destroyed. The waywardness, our waywardness is taken away. Then the wealth, our wealth, the wealth of his goodness, both spiritual and secular, is assured. Our wealth, our wealth in God, and then our wisdom. Hallelujah. Wisdom is, is, is given unto us. We regain the wisdom of God. Wisdom unto greatness is regained. The wrath of God is pacified. The way of godliness is brought back. Watchfulness of the, of the godly is rekindled. Waywardness of the ungodly is diminished. The wealth of his goodness, spiritual and secular, they are assured. Wisdom unto greatness is regained. Weak wisdom unto greatness is regained. Now, working for God becomes refreshing again. Hallelujah. Working for God. That's the benefit. Working for God becomes refreshing. You become his battle axe. He sharpens you. Now you can work for him. Now you can be fruitful for him. Now you are abiding in him. That's the worth of restoration. That's what it is worth. And now, willingness to obey and follow God. Hallelujah. No, you don't have to be forced now. You don't have to be pushed. The willingness to obey and to follow God becomes very, very easy. There's that willingness now. But realize, the weakness and the weariness of the past is gone. The weakness and the weariness of the past is gone. That's what restoration. You know, remember, if somebody was, uh, if somebody fainted, if somebody fainted, they lose their strength, they lose their power. But then, when they are restored and resuscitated, they regain their strength and the weakness is gone. All the weaknesses that we got as a result of sinfulness, they are all gone because we have strength. We have the word of God. We are now strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. The weakness and the weakness is gone. And now, winning in Christ. Hallelujah. Now you and I can become winners in Christ. Winners we are. Brothers and sisters, winners we are. I said you are winners. Amen. Tell somebody you are a winner. You are a winner, you are a winner in Christ. You are a winner. When you are restored, you are a winner in Christ. When you are restored, you are a winner in Christ. But understand also that your world view is now corrected. Your world view is corrected. You are no longer looking. The way you are looking at the world is corrected. You are looking wrongly before. When you, know, when you are out of restoration, you'll be looking wrongly. You look at the prosperity of people outside there and you say, Oh, 
I wish I get what they get, but now you realize with all the wealth or whatever they get, they will still end up in, in hell fire. But now you see the true riches. You know, the Bible says that the blessings of the Lord, he maketh to rich. He adds no sorrow unto it. Now your world view is corrected. You are seeing the world in the proper way. You see those who are out there, those who don't know the Lord, you know they are sinners and you are concerned for them. You are not envious of them, envious of their position, envious of their money. No, your world view is corrected. And finally now, your worth in eternity is restored. I said, your worth in eternity is restored. In fact, that's more important than any other point that I've made. Because the essence of restoration is that what you are worth in eternity can be restored. Because eternity is at stake for everyone who loses restoration. Eternity is at stake for everyone who is not saved. Eternity is at stake for anyone who is not holy. But when we are restored, when we are restored to salvation, when we are restored to righteousness, our worth in eternity is restored. And my prayer tonight is, your worth in eternity will be restored in Jesus' name. Everything you have lost, the Lord will give unto you. Your strength is restored. Your strength is renewed. The grace of God is renewed. The power of God is given unto you anew and afresh. And all that you need for life, and godliness is given unto you. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Pardon me to read Joel chapter 2 before we start praying. Because the worth, the worth, the worth is very important. Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2 verse 25. And I will restore to you, that's the worth, here on earth. I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. That's why restoration is important. You regain all your lost years, your lost time, your lost treasure. What the canker worm and the caterpillars have eaten, the palmer worm, my great army, which I send among you. And ye shall eat in plenty. There will be surplus. God will grant you surplus. And you will be satisfied. And you will praise the name of, the, of, of your God, the Lord your God, that has dealt wondrously. Hallelujah. Wondrously. Now you begin to experience the wonder of God. He has dwelt wondrously with you. And he says, and my people shall never be ashamed. You will know no shame. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? My people shall not be ashamed. Verse 27, and ye shall know that I am, I am in the midst of Israel. I am in the midst of you. And I am the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Those two, those two phrases are so important. God in the midst, God is your God. When people out there are able to know that God is your God, they will tremble. They will be afraid. When God can show himself mighty on our behalf, the outside world will just wonder. They will be amazed by the, by the God that we serve. And so, is it worth it? Oh, yes. Because we are, our years are restored. Our substance is restored. Our stability is restored. You see, the wonders of God is resolved. Our shame is turned around to glory. In the name of Jesus, God becomes our companion. God becomes our guide. Hallelujah. He said, it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit. Verse 28. I will pour out my spirit. The spirit of God becomes our native land. The power of God becomes where we reside. The presence of God becomes our home. Hallelujah. He says... And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That means the blessing is spreading from us to others. That's the blessing. That's the work of restoration. And then he goes on to say, your old men shall dream dreams. You see now dreams are coming. People are no longer angry that, you know, there's nothing good coming. Now they realize something good is coming. And something good is coming to you. I said something good is coming to you. Your hopes that were dashed before, they are now rekindled in the name of Jesus. It says, your, your, your old men and your young men, they shall see visions. And also upon the servants and the handmaids, I will pour out my spirit. You can see the, the spirit of God begins to work. Look at verse 30, uh, verse 30, and I will show wonders. Hallelujah. In heaven and on earth, blood and fire and pillar of smoke. And it shall come to pass. 
that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, deliverance will be very easy. Restoration makes deliverance very easy. You don't even need anyone to help you. You call on the Lord. Like as you are going to call on the Lord tonight, you call on the Lord, He will answer you. Amen. Are you ready to call upon Him tonight? Yes. Let me give you an assurance. He says, Whosoever, that's you now. Whosoever, do you believe that's you? Whosoever your name is there shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered. There's an assurance of deliverance for you. Assurance of deliverance. Assurance of great things. Assurance of the wonders and signs of God. For in Mount Zion, where you are now is Mount Zion. And in Jerusalem, where you are now is your Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance. I said there shall be deliverance. Amen. Where you are tonight, in our church over there in Boston, there is deliverance. Amen. In your homes, where you are hearing me, there is deliverance. Amen. As the Lord has said, as the Lord has said tonight, there will be deliverance. Amen. There is deliverance for you, there is deliverance for me. Because God says so. In Isaiah 57 verse 18, he says, I have seen his way. God has seen your way. I will heal him. He will heal you. I will lead him also. He will lead you. And I will restore comfort unto him. Hallelujah. Look at it. Healing is coming tonight. Guidance is coming tonight. Comfort is coming tonight. So shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Rise up with me and let us pray. Rise up with me and, and let us pray. Rise up with me, rise up with me, wherever you are, you are at home, wherever you are, rise up, rise up, rise up. We are going to begin to bless the Lord tonight. Thank God for restoration. Thank God for repentance. If there's anything you need to repent of, this is the time for you to do so. Do you need to repent of anything? Open your mouth. Open your mouth. If there's any reservation anywhere, open your mouth and say, Father, Father, I repent of it. Ha. Remember that prodigal? He said, I will go to my father. If you have been running away from God, now tonight come to the Father. Come to the Father tonight. Come to the Savior tonight. Come before him. Come to his presence. Come and enjoy his presence. Come and enjoy his miracle. Come and enjoy his forgiveness. Come and enjoy fruitfulness. Come and enjoy everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be thy holy name. We worship you tonight. Father, we come before you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we glorify you. Thank you tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the grace to repent. Thank you for grace to engage with you. Thank God for sincerity of purpose. Thank God for truthfulness in our heart. Thank you for making us being open. Father, we are open to your blessing tonight. We are open to your anointing tonight. We are open to your goodness tonight. Our lives are ready. Our lives are ready. Blessed be thy holy name. Open your mouth and say, Father... I am open tonight. In every area, every area that is closed and uh, it looks like there is no way, Father, let there be openness tonight. Let the door be open tonight. Let the favor of God be released tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, I accept any area I've gone wrong. I accept. I'm abandoning the past. I'm accepting your pardon. I am trusting in you that you are going to do wonders. I am trusting in you, O oh Lord, Father. I am going to be obedient to your word henceforth. Father, Lord, I receive a new spirit. Father, I receive nurture from the, from the throne of grace. Even tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, all the broken pieces, all the broken area. Lord, we are asking for restoration now. Restoration now. Restoration now. Restoration now. In the name of Jesus. Let there be no delay anymore. No delay anymore. No delay anymore. Let's tell the Lord, Father, restoration now. Restoration now. In the name of Jesus. We want to thank God for what Christ has done. We want to pray that God Almighty, O oh Lord, Father, that which Christ has done, let it be made manifest in my life. Let it be made manifest in your life. Let it be made manifest in our life. In the name of Jesus. Manifestation of the restoration power. Manifestation of the goodness of God. Manifestation of the favor of God, of the power of God, of the goodness of God in every area of our life. Tonight, let there be restoration. 
restoration unto faith, restoration unto faithfulness, restoration unto fruitfulness. Wherever there has been barrenness, Lord, we declare tonight fruitfulness, fruitfulness, fullness of your power, fullness of your glory. Be, O oh Lord, Father, be manifested now. Be manifested now. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth and tell God, Father, all that I have lost tonight, I regain them back. I regain them back. I regain them back. I receive them back in the name of Jesus. Everything that has been lost, all that I have lost, I receive them back. I receive them back in the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you praise. I receive them back. I receive them back. All that I have lost. All that I have lost. My Lord and my God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let it be so. Father, let it be so. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory be unto your name. Glory be unto your name. In the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord tonight. Invite the spirit of newness. Invite the spirit of restoration to rest upon you now. Restoration spirit. If there's any repentance to do, please do it. Please do it. Don't stop. Don't stop. I'm still hearing in my spirit that there are people who need to do repentance. 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 Hallelujah. The, the, the psalmist said, I repent in dust and ashes. He said, Lord, I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent. Let there be repentance now. Repentance now. Don't hide under anything. God can see everything. God knows everything. Repentance. I am hearing a lot of repentance that needs to be done. Wherever you have given up, God say repent. It may not just be seen. It may not be seen. There are some ideas that you have in your heart. And those ideas will not work. Those ideas will not prosper. Those ideas will not move you forward. You are imbibing the worldly spirit. You are imbibing the worldly way of doing things. God says to repent. God says I should tell you to repent. Repent tonight. Repent tonight. And let the way be made open for the stream of heaven to flow into your life. I don't want that stream of heaven to be hindered. So let there be repentance. Tell God I repent in those and ashes of every area I've gone astray. You know, maybe in world, whatever you have said, whatever thoughts you have that are contrary to the way of God, maybe there are things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Young people, I'm hearing very clearly in the spirit tonight that there are some of you that God actually gave assignments and he directed your way, but you seem to have deviated. God says we repent. God says, I gave you an assignment. I led you in a particular way. But you said, I don't want to go in that way anymore. I don't want to go in that way anymore. And now you are walking your own way. Oh, God says, I should tell you tonight to repent. God says, I should tell you to, tonight to repent. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. If you are that individual or those individuals, I want you to open your mouth and say, Father, I repent. Father, I am very sorry for going my own way, for following my own path. That's why things have been difficult. God said, that's why you have not had a headway. You are now complaining. Things are not working. Things are not moving forward. God says, it will not move forward until you repent. It, there will be no restoration until you repent. Open your mouth and say, Father, in dust and ashes I repent. I repent tonight. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Father, I want to engage in holiness now. I want to be sincere tonight. I want to follow your way, your path for me tonight. Lord, anywhere I've gone astray, Bring me back. Bring me back. Bring me back. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. In every area. In every area that you have lost it. God Almighty says tonight. As you repent. As you repent. As you repent. The blessing will be restored. The blessing will be restored. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Father. Thank you Father. Glory be unto your name. Glory be unto your name. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, you are expecting something this week. Something, a, a very important news. You've been expecting it. But God says, that repentance will open the door for it to come. That repentance is going to open. He said, I can work on those who need to release that blessing. 
But I need you to be in the right spirit. I need you to be on the right status. I need you to be restored to my favor and mercy. Then you are able to see me work for you. If you are that individual tonight, we are going to pray for you. That God Almighty will attune you to his word. God will attune you to his way. God will attune you to his will. That tonight, you will be able to come back to the way of righteousness. So that that which you are expecting God to do, it can be done in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray as I pray along with you. Because you know with mouth confession is made. With your mouth, confession is made. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, I bless you and glorify you, O Lord, Father. For my brothers and sisters tonight, I thank you, I praise you. Because of the individuals, O Lord, Father, who are online tonight, hearing me, O Lord, in this conference. Father, I pray and ask those who have lost their way, those who have gone astray, those who are doing their own thing. And that's not what you want them to do. Yes, it looks like they are just going that way. And it looks okay for them. But you say, that's not my way. That's not my way. They are not going to last on that way. Father, I'm asking that the way of righteousness be open unto them. The blessing, O oh Lord, Father, of guidance of heaven be granted unto them tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I pray in your mercy, correct them. In your love, correct them. Bring them back to the right path. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Somebody is so frustrated by, by a situation that you are going through now, that you are almost giving up. God wants me to tell you, no frustration in your life. Amen. God wants me to tell you, that thing that looks like frustration, he said, I'm going to turn it around to fulfillment for you. I said, God wants me to tell you it will become fulfillment in your life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together now as I pray along with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit my, my brothers and sisters into your hand. Everything that is frustrating them right now. Father, I'm asking and praying, turn it to fulfillment. Fulfillment, oh Lord, in their career. Fulfillment in their life. You know, the individual especially looking for job, looking for job, and you are so frustrated. The Lord wants me to tell you, you will get that job now. Now that you have made your way right, you will get that job now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying and asking for this individual. Lord, it will not take him, you know, a long time. In fact, this week, I pray. This week, I believe you, Lord. You are going to open the way for him. The way for him to be settled, to be established, to get a fruitful work. Oh, Lord, Father, to a surplus that will cause him to be joyful. God says, you are be so down. You are down in your spirit. I don't have a job. I don't have this. I don't have that. What am I even serving God for? The Lord will surprise you this week. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, oh Lord, Father, for this individual. Surprise this individual. In the name of Jesus. Father, you are a God of wonder. I am praying tonight, uh, do wonders. Do wonders. Do wonders. Do wonders. You have been pursuing that, that admission. <laughs> it's like you can, you know, every time you seem to get close to it, it seems to be gone. But this is your year. This is your year now. God says this is your year now. In the name of Jesus. They've been complaining that you don't have one requirement. But now, God says you have the requirement now. Not in the physical, but in the spiritual. You have the requirement now. Father, in the name of Jesus, for this individual, I am praying and asking, Father, that requirement, that reason for which they are disqualifying him or her, I'm asking now that that disqualification be disqualified. In the name of Jesus, we disqualify everything that is disqualifying them. Your children need to go to school. They need to move further. They need to move higher. Oh, Lord of glory, I pray now. Open the way for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, be glorified. Let them know that you are God. Let them see your hand working on their behalf from now on. In the name of Jesus, surprise this individual. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You know, you are already telling God, I don't think I can be accepted. You know, it's like everybody is rejecting me. Everybody is rejecting me. Everybody is rejecting me. Well, I bring rejoicing to you tonight. I said I bring rejoicing to you tonight because where you have been rejo rejected, you will be rejoicing now. Amen. God says that thing for which you are rejected will be bringing rejoicing to you now. God says there is going to be restoration of your joy in that area in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this individual tonight. I'm asking and praying for my brothers and sisters, those who have been rejected in one area or the other in their career. 
Oh Lord, even particularly now, Lord, particularly right now, the individual who needs to get married and there will be a, a stream of rejection. But now, that rejection stop now in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, where he has been rejected, she has been rejected. Acceptance begins now in the name of Jesus. Favor begins now. Mercy of God begins now. As a result of this restoration conference, Father, restore all that they have lost unto them. In Jesus' name. Even this individual who have lost something concerning her business, his business, I'm asking Lord tonight, let there be restoration. In the mighty name of Jesus, restore unto them all that they have lost in a hundredfold. Father, I pray, surprise everyone who is hearing me now. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know where the doctors have said, we have no more answers. There is answer in heaven. Heaven is never short of answer. Holy Spirit divine, surprising answer, divine answer from the throne of God. Grant it unto them in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we bless you and we glorify you. Lord, I'm asking now for everyone, for everyone, for everyone, for everyone online now, for everyone hearing me now. I'm asking in the name of Jesus that what the enemy meant for death, Father, let there be life. Let there be love. Let there be living. Let there be a lifting up. Let them become limitless. In the name of Jesus, what the enemy meant for evil. Holy Spirit divine, I pray that it will turn to an engagement. It will turn to an encouragement. In the mighty name of Jesus, where the enemy meant to demote them, to bring them down. But let it cause discipline in their life. Let it bring dedication to God. In the name of Jesus, let it develop them. Let it bring them to a durable pathway. Oh God, endurance in the race of life. Grant it unto them. In Jesus' name. What the enemy meant for wasting. To waste their life, waste their resources. Father, I thank you for wisdom that is overwhelming them. I thank you for making them winners now. I thank you, O Lord, for the new wine. And the worthiness that is coming into their life. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray. Where the enemy is warring against them now. Hallelujah. As they wait on the Lord. Father, wars. Every war we turn to wonder. The wonders of God will be, will be untold. And the workings of heaven will begin to be manifested now. In their life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, those who are feeling condemned, judged. Oh, Lord, Father, in their spirit, I'm asking, Lord, that heaven will bring justification. Justification and joy in the Holy Ghost. Grant unto them tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Every form of abuse by the enemy. Abasement by the enemy. Lord, I'm asking, you will turn those to become doorways. Access for your people to acceptance. In Jesus' name. Let there be spiritual accomplishment. Let there be heavens, applause. I'm asking and praying. Athlete enrichment and endowment. Father, you will give unto them. In Jesus' name. Amen. No more anger. No more accusations. Amen. No more annoyance. Amen. No more anxiety. Father, I pray. Let the joy of the Lord be their strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I'm praying right now for every individual. Every voice, every ear hearing me now, whatever the desires may be in their heart, concerning this restoration conference, Father, I pray, begin to do the restoration work now. Restoration in their spirit. Restoration in their self. Oh, Lord, in their career. Restoration in their soul. Restoration in their family. Restor all around restoration, Father. Grant unto them, in Jesus' name, let the fire of God be restored. Let the fiery spirit be restored. Let their spirituality be restored. Let their substance, oh Lord, and safety and security in Christ be restored in Jesus' name. Amen. Bible says the Lord is a son and is a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Nothing good will live with all. From them that walk uprightly, almighty and everlasting Father. I'm asking and praying in the mighty name of Jesus, the Father, everything that will beautify their life. Grant unto them now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Almighty Father. We bless you and we glorify you. I pray that everyone who has been part of this conference will have a testimony. Amen. Everyone will testify to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless you and we glorify you. Amen. Father, tonight we pray, everyone who is weak, they will be strong. Amen. Those who are sick, they are healed. Amen. Those who are down, they are lifted up. Those who are wobbly, they are established. 
Father, I pray that those who have missed the way, now they are restored to the old righteous path again in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, confirm all of this and much more in the life of every participant and everyone that will hear this message, even later on in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we give you glory and we give you honor. Blessed be thy holy name. Father, we thank you for our father, father in uh, Boston there. We pray for him and his family. Pray that your grace continue to flow ceaselessly in the family, in the ministry, in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you and we bless you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, for in Father. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. You got it? Amen. I said you got the blessing. I'm going to hear your testimony. Amen. I say you will call me and give me the testimony. Amen. Say, Pastor, I will call you. Pastor, I, will call I believe the Lord has done it. The miracle has started. I will testify to the goodness of God. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Amen.